Well, hello folks and welcome back. In this episode of Shop Talk, I'm going to demonstrate setting the ignition timing on the Yamaha YL1. Now, ignition timing is not particularly difficult to set, but it does need to be precise and it can be a little bit fiddly. Before we get to that though, I would like to review the specifications and the tools that I will be using on this project. When discussing the timing specifications, I'm going to reference this climber service manual. You can get the same information, I'm sure, from other service manuals, and I know the Yamaha service manual includes it as well. What I'm concerning myself with right now are two specifications. You see right here I've got the YL1. We're talking about point gap, that is the points that pop open uh, when the engine rotates and the ignition timing and that's typically expressed as before top dead center. Now just a little caveat, I, uh, I'm going to be working in imperial measurements because my dial indicators, I have two of them, are both imperial or inch. They measure in thousandths of an inch and since I don't have a metric indicator I'm going to have to work with imperial. I would actually prefer to work in metrics but I've never gotten around to picking up a metric dial indicator. So we're going to have to work with the inch uh, specifications in each column. First thing you typically will set when you're doing ignition timing is your point gap. And in the case of the YL1 it's 12 to 14 thousandths of an inch as you can see there. And the ignition timing is 71 thousandths before top dead center. I realize for some of my viewers this might be a little bit on the elementary side, but I'm not confident everyone watching this has experienced timing engines, especially two-strokes, and it's quite critical on a two-stroke to get this right, and some of the terminology that we throw around. So bear with me if this is redundant for you. But please be aware this uh, graphical representation uh, does not represent the YL1. I'm using this only to discuss timing in general and terminology. So you won't see something exactly like this on the YL1 when we get over to it. But for sake of discussion, consider this inside the red circle, the flywheel, and behind that on the back side would be the points and condenser condensers. The black outer ring would be the engine case. And it's very common to see a setup such as this where you will have a mark, or two marks in this case, F over here on the, on the right for fire, and T for T or top dead center. Now the rotation of the flywheel will be counterclockwise in this illustration, and the front of the bike would be to the left, this way. So if the engine is rotating counterclockwise, at the point that this F mark right here, this line labeled F, comes around and aligns with this mark that you often find either inscribed, a line, or even a pointer cast into the engine cover. That's the point when these two marks align right here that the points will start to open and will uh, produce a current to the spark plugs. It will fire, in other words, a spark plug. The T or top, or top dead center, at the, is the point where the piston on that cylinder is at the very top of its stroke. Because of the momentum and the, and the high speed of the spinning of the engine, the plug uh, needs to fire just before the engine reaches top dead center. It's not, uh, it's not as critical if it fires just a tad late. That would uh, reduce your power a little bit, but it, would be, uh, it could be catastrophic if it fires too early. That's how you end up with hold pistons and other serious problems. So this is a, this is a critical specification. You want to get this as close as you can, this fire and this mark to align. Now on the YL1, since we don't have this exact setup, what we are going to do is we're going to determine top dead center and then back off. 71 thousandths, and at that point, 71 thousandths on a dial indicator, and at that point is when um, we will adjust the points so that they just start to open, which would be uh, the point of firing the spark plug. Let's move on and talk about the tools that I'm going to use. Here are the tools that uh, I'm going to use to set the timing on the little YL1. 
uh, the spark plug adapter for the dial indicator. You may have seen me make or fabricate this a number of videos back. And that's going to be used to locate this dial indicator and the spark plug hole, the cylinder that I'm going to time. Fueler gauges, I have, uh, since the specification for the points is 12 to 14 thousandths, I have one, you can see there, at 13 thousandths out. And then I have a second one, 12, 13, and 14. The primary one I'm going to use is this 13 thousandths because it's narrow and it slips into the points nicely. I'm not a real fan of using wide uh, feeler gauges if I can help it because it's real easy to twist like this and uh, open up the points, the point spring. Uh, you can use these if you're, if you're careful and take your time. This just happens to be my preferred uh, style right here. In terms of actually setting the points, uh, most manuals will suggest using a meter like this, a multimeter. Now, I, um, I don't use modern digital meters like this one for setting the points. They just don't, for me, they just don't work well. I just don't care to use them. So I press my old uh, Radio Shack 35, 40-year-old meter in the service. This, uh, this uh, dial is a little bit sticky. The wand is a little sticky now these days. I, I don't use this hardly ever except for setting points because it still works pretty well for that. And uh, that's what's recommended. However, what I prefer to use, believe it or not, is a sound indicator. And many years ago, I rigged up this little simple uh, noisemaker. This is a little buzzer I got again, I think at Radio Shack, nine volt battery. And uh, it, what it does is it makes noise. It activates when the points open and close and you'll hear, hear it right here. When I touch them together, the uh, alligator clips. The only problem of using this for a video, I suspect, I haven't done it yet of course, is that noise is going to be irritating. Now when I'm alone and I'm setting the points, it's not a problem, but I think for the video I might have to figure out how to work around the irritation of the noise and while I'm trying to talk. The reason I prefer to use a noise uh, maker like this, or a buzzer, I can watch the dial indicator and just listen for the, the, the tone. I don't have to watch a meter and the dial indicator or the light and the dial indicator at the same time. I just uh, use uh, the sound to tell me when I'm where I need to be. That's very convenient. Now I realize not everyone's going to have one of these so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the point points with the noise um, indicator here, the little buzzer and then we will verify it with the meter and the light. Now the light, very simple to make. In fact, I hacked this one together many years ago. It could use a, probably a good uh, sorting out here, but nonetheless, I've got, again, a nine volt battery and I've got a lead coming in, lead coming out from the light, just a light bulb. I think this is a, just a, probably a 12 volter. And when I put these together, you can see the light bulb comes on. That also indicate at what, which point the points open and close. So again, I'm going to use the buzzer here for the initial setting because that's my preferred way of doing it. But we will also verify with the meter and the light bulb. Let's move on over to the bike and I'm going to set some of this up and uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can't get um, the points adjusted. Using the little dial indicator spark plug adapter I made a number of videos ago, I'm going to just thread that into the left cylinder and I'm going to thread it in finger tight only but as tight as I can reasonably get it with my fingers like that. The right spark plug I have still in place and the reason I've left it in place since it's, it's very loose, it's only spun in by a couple of threads, is I don't want any debris or anything to find its way down 
into that spark plug hole. Taking the dial indicator, I'm just going to slip it into the hole and get the start again. Now, here is uh, where we're going to actually determine top dead center and uh, get everything positioned so that we can figure out the 71 thousandths before top dead center that we need to set the points to open. And I do this a little bit different than others, I think, but I'll explain my rationale behind that as we go. Now, if you remember the specification called for, uh, we want the points to open, and since I'm working on the left cylinder, that would be the orange wire right here. The gray wire, which is on the right, this terminal, is the right cylinder. So we're going to concern ourselves with the orange wire right now. Now we need to find the top dead center of the left piston. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a 12 millimeter wrench right here on the end of this bolt that holds the uh, stator assembly in place. And I'm going to rotate this counterclockwise this way and watch the dial. And eventually it will come around and uh, we'll find top dead center. Right? And you can see it's moving right now. That's approximately top dead center, and you can see the stem of the indicator is all the way up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this indicator up, and watch that inner dial right there where my pinky's pointing. I'm going to lift that indicator up, and right now I am not touching the piston. It's free. I'm going to push it back down in just a bit until that little indicator comes around to the one. That's 100 thousandths. And I'm going to put the needle pointing straight up. Like that. And then tighten the set screw holding the indicator in place. So we know right now then that right there it's top dead center of the left piston. What I'm going to do now, and this is a part that's a little bit different than uh, what a lot of folks would probably do. I just find it's easier for me. I'm going to rotate this dial around to read 71. Right there. So that dial, and your angle might might uh, suggest it's a, it's different. Take my word for it. Right now it's at seventy one thousandths. Now if I rotate this backwards, the zero mark right there is where we will want the points to open. So right, approximately right there is where we're going to want the points to start to open which will induce current to the spark plug. I prefer to just have zero as a target visually, so that I don't have to worry about locating the 71 thousandths or the 71. I'd like to look for the zero. It's the same difference either way. I could have set this to zero up here and then backed off 71 thousandths, which would have been, what, 29? Uh, thousands on the indicator over here, but I find using zeros just easier for me. You can do it either way, of course. Top dead center, rotate backwards. So right there is where we're going to want our uh, points to open. Next thing we need to do is set the ignition point. Remember, we're going to be working with the points connected to the orange wire, and the orange wire comes down to this set of points through this uh, wire right here. And you can see how they work. There's a cam in here, and as this spins, this uh, will open and close the points. Now these points have not been replaced. Neither the points nor the co uh, condensers have been replaced. They're original to the bike. I checked them over and uh, visually, and they were in very good shape. I did run a uh, file and then some emery paper through both sets of points, the other one for the right cylinders over here. 
the process is identical though, whether you're working with the left or the right side. And I, I just made sure they're nice and clean and I sprayed them down with a little bit of uh, contact cleaner. And I think they're in very good shape. Later on, I, uh, once I get the bike running, I have some anomalies with the running of the bike. I might look at the condensers, but right now I'm not, uh, I'm not there. In order to set the point gap on this particular machine, and these points are a little bit different, again, than, than uh, some others you might encounter. There's a little lock nut right here. Let me um, just loosen that up. That's a lock nut, and then a screw. And you adjust the point gap by turning this screw, and there's a hex uh, attached to it at the top. You can use that as well. I prefer to use a screwdriver on this kind, these kind of points. And you can see I can adjust those points or the point gap anywhere I want. In order to set the point gap, we need to make sure the points are at their uh, widest opening. So I'm going, to, I'm going to close this up, rotate this around until I'm sure the points are all the way open visually. And if you want, you can go all the way around again, watch them close, and then watch them reopen. There's their widest point. Now I'm going to take my 13 thousandths feeler gauge and I'm going to see where we're at. We're a little loose. So I can turn that with my finger. Just till I get a comfortable amount of drag on that. Now I'm going to tighten this lock nut. Now these will probably move on me. This is one of those uh, parts that can be a little fiddly I talked about er earlier. Again, I'm going to take my 13 thousandths. Yeah, see they tightened up on me a little bit. Not surprising. So I'm just going to loosen this up just a little bit. I can loosen that lock nut just a touch. Is about right there. Tighten that lock nut and then check it again. Seems about right. Let's see if the 14 thousandths will go in. It shouldn't. And it doesn't. So I know it's smaller than 14, and obviously the 12 will go in with no problem. So I think we're about 13 thousandths. And we've got our point gap now set. I've changed my setup a bit to give you a better perspective. I have one camera uh, zeroed in on the dial indicator, so you can watch that in parallel to me setting the points. I thought this would be a, a little bit more meaningful than a shot from way back where I'd have to try to capture both of these uh, sections at the same time. First thing I'm going to do is rotate the engine around once again to top dead center going forward or the normal rotation. And you'll see here in a moment it will come right around and 
right there, the 71 thousandths of an inch on the dial. Now I'm going to hook up my little buzzer, the orange wire. Here to start the buzz. You're going to have to bear with me on that noise. And now I'm going to go in reverse back around to zero on the dial. And I should hear a bit of a tone change. And it didn't, so that means my timing is off. Let's keep going and see what we find. There, right there. See that? Hear that tone change? I want that tone change right at the zero mark, right there. Which means the uh, points are opening too early, or what is called advanced. It's opening too, they're opening too soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen two screws, one here and one here. You'll notice this top one is a little bit uh, damaged. Someone's been obviously in here before. So I'm just going to loosen these off a little bit. They already were a little loose from when I was in here working on this, uh, when I put the assembly back together. I'm going to hook the uh, buzzer back up, and I'm going to move the points right in here. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's some notches here, here, and here. And those notches are designed so that you can take a, a flat-bladed screwdriver and insert it in the notch, and you can twist it like this and uh, move that point plate back and forth. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I need to reconnect the buzzer. And we're going to, and we're on zero. In fact, we've moved just a little bit, I think. There's lots of drift on me just a touch. Pretty close to zero right there. Now I'm going to move these points and see which way, oh, there we go. Hear that tone change? We're real close right there. I'm going to snug this bottom screw up just a little bit. And this is where it can get a little fussy. Sometimes these have a tendency to want to change on you. And take my wrench. You can see there, it's a little bit retarded or late. And uh, move the points a little bit again. Snug it down just a bit. And we're going to keep doing this till we get it right. See that's real close, a half a thousandth off. See if we can get a little bit closer. It's going to be a little tough because we are so close. Gently snug this bottom screw. Went too far. I'll twist that just a little bit. Snug the screw. Let's check it again. No, see it went the other way again. Keep it on zero. Snug up the screw. Oh, we're right on the button right there. You see that? See right as I come up to zero? So 
that. So we're on right now. The trick is to prevent it from moving on us. So I got the other screw and recheck it. Okay, we're good. Let's go back around 71. Top dead center, reverse, and watch the needle come to zero. And listen for the tone change. It's about as close as you're going to get it. We're less than half a thousandth off on the dial indicator. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over and use the light bulb, the homemade light bulb, and then the meter, and we'll verify our settings. You can see I've got the light bulb hooked up. It's got a very dim glow to it. I'm, I've uh, turned the crank just a bit. Let me bring it back around to top dead center right there. Now I'm going to go back to zero and watch the light bulb. Now the light bulb should get brighter just as this hits zero on the meter. If it does, uh, the light bulb agrees with the buzzer. See right there. That's the sweet spot right there. So we're about half a thousandth maybe or so retarded, which is just a touch later than zero which is a preferred condition. If you're going to be off a little bit, either way, you want it retarded, not advanced. As far as I'm concerned, the light bulb agrees with the buzzer. Now we'll switch over and get the meter, and we'll do the same thing. I have my analog meter set up the same way I did the buzzer and the light bulb. Uh, one end is grounded to the engine case, the other to the orange wire. You can see where I'm at on the dial indicator in terms of top dead center. There it is right there. So what I'm going to do is go backwards around to the zero mark on the dial indicator and you should just see this wand, this needle, just fluctuate, just a touch, just bob when I get to the zero mark. So we're going to go back and reverse, watch the needle. Right there. And that indicates that the meter, the light bulb, and the buzzer all agree on my settings. And I am almost exactly on zero. I'm just half a thousandth or so retarded. That is late. But that's about as close as you're going to get it with this kind of setup, so I'm satisfied with that. So there you have it folks, we've set the ignition timing on the left cylinder of the Yamaha YL1. I will go ahead and set the right cylinder, again which is the gray wire, to the points on this side. This is the other set of points off camera because it will be redundant and a duplicate of what you've just seen. As I shared at the beginning of this video, uh, setting ignition timing isn't terribly complicated, but it does need to be reasonably precise. And it can get a little fiddly as you're tightening those set screws down to hold things in position. So don't be surprised if you don't have to take a couple of runs at it to get it right. My advice to you, if you can't get it right on zero, and I'm within half a thousandth on the retarded side on that dial, which is well within my personal uh, tolerance for this, I think that's perfectly acceptable. If you do have trouble getting it right on zero, if anything, go to a touch to the retarded side that is firing a little late. You might go down on power. You don't want to be um, crazy about it. Don't go too far in advance. You should be able to get it pretty close like you saw me be here. Uh, you go down on power if you go a little late on the ignition timing, but you won't risk serious engine damage like you potentially could do if you go to the advanced or firing too early. Uh, there are techniques to improve performance by advancing the ignition timing, but you need to know what you're doing and you need to have the right equipment. You need to have experience to do that and I would not recommend the average person attempt to go too far advanced on ignition beyond the zero mark in this case. That's it for this video, folks. Any issues, thoughts, questions, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.